Hey then everyone, coming up we have the top games hitting the Nintendo Switch this coming week from the 16th of June to the 19th. We break them down for you with a brief summary, the price, date of release in the UK, EU and US, keeping it simple for everyone to get a bit of a flavour of the week. If at the end of the video you felt that this was something of value and a bit entertaining, then maybe consider subbing for more videos from James Jordan and myself every week. Let's get into it. Got a great surprise for you, ladies and gentlemen. Today I've got James on the line. How you doing, pal? Hey, mate. Yeah, doing very well. Nice chilled out weekend. And uh, I'm looking forward to some of these games coming out next week. Don't know about you. Yeah, I certainly have. Let's begin. Let's uh, break this list down. We're going to start with Burnout Paradise, which comes out at £44.99. I think the price is a little bit steep, but it's uh, the remastered edition coming out on the 19th of June. I don't know what your memories are, James, but mine are certainly of playing it on the 360 back in 2006 or so. And I just distinctly remember with this one crashing a lot and loving it what about you <laughs> i remember just taking beautiful cars smashing them into traffic and what i distinctly remember is a feeling of super speed i just remember feeling like i'm going at a million miles an hour and always feeling on the edge it's brilliant yeah absolutely looking forward to this one apparently it's fully optimized at 60 frames per second and it's also got touch screen controls for the map which sounds good well i mean what do you think about that because you play a lot in handheld I do. I think this could be really good. Again, like I'm saying, you know, you're zoning in. Is something fast going up on your screen? It could work really well. I just hope that the port runs as well as they've been promising us. And I haven't actually played the remastered version, so let's see. Yeah, well, Electronic Arts publishing this one, so let's hope it's a good one. James, tell us what your pick of the week is, buddy. Thanks, Juan. My pick of the week is Ruiner from the fantastic Devolver Digital. They got their hands on this one and published it. I saw that, and so it's an instant buy from me. As you know, anything that they make is quality. Absolutely, buddy. I think they, uh, yeah, they're publishing this one, aren't they? Uh, they've published some great games. Hotline Miami, The Messenger, My Friend Pedro. Some fantastic games there. Uh, one of my favourites, wait a sec, Enter the Gungeon. I love that game. Oh, you love that one. Um, I think, you know, this one had me at brutal shooter <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so it's set, it's set in the future there's a cyberpunk inspired kind of thing going on and there's a corrupt system you're going to rescue your brother and uncover the truth the sci-fi stuff which yeah sounds pretty which decent we, to me we both love to be fair let's be honest i mean anything sci-fi <laughs> shooter type stuff i mean we're both looking forward to cyberpunk as well i know that's not on the uh, switch but uh, yeah, that looks to be good as well. All right, Jordan's going to talk about uh, Coma 2, which is a horror game. He reviewed the first part, gave that one a 5 out of 10. <laughs> he didn't like that one. He did not <laughs> no. like that one. Let's well, say it. Coma, he, he did like it. He just said that it had quite a few issues at the time. But I've heard from him that uh, he's saying that it's a lot better than part 1. So I'm looking forward to his review on that. But anyway, let's bring Jordan in all the way from China to break down the Coma 2 Vicious Sisters for you. Hey everyone, now this week is a tough choice for me, but I'm gonna go for Coma 2 Vicious Sisters. This is a sequel to a game that I did not like. Yes, I really tried to like the original, but it had a couple of flaws that ruined the experience. But I am confident that the developers listened to feedback and have hopefully implemented changes for this sequel. It is a survival horror game on a 2D plane with a classic Korean style, as you're stalked by a malicious killer hell-bent on taking your life. With other horrors to avoid and puzzles to solve, I'm convinced this is going to be a much better experience this time around. It's been priced at $11.99 in the UK and $14.99 in Europe and the US, but you can get a 10% discount for the first week, which is always nice. Stay tuned for my upcoming review. Many thanks to Jordan for that breakdown. Moving on, we've got Summer in Mara, which I know a lot of the audience are looking forward to greatly. Um, it's coming out at £19.99. It's got that feel of uh, farming, crafting, exploring and all of that kind of stuff we've seen quite a few of these games i mean one of your favorite games is a farming simulation isn't it so what do you think about this one yeah i mean it, it's got potential we'll have to just wait and see i mean there's a lot of islands to explore millions and millions of quests to do it's a genre that has some top top games in it so you know it doesn't live up to that what was your um, what's your favorite in the genre Farming Sims. Stardew, Stardew Valley. Stardew's the one for me, yeah. But there's you know, some brilliant ones out there. I mean, of course, Animal Crossing is uh, you know a little bit different, but it's a game that most people love these days. I keep hearing about it everywhere you go. You can't avoid it. In fact, I know that's a firm favourite in your household, isn't it? 
Yeah, oh, I've been playing that a lot with uh, my little one. Um, but Monster Hunter Generations has taken it over the household right now. As you well know. As I well know, in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're getting in on the action with uh, myself and the little one. And uh, she's she's unbelievable at it. But, uh, uh, I've got to say, Juan, I mean, you're, you're keeping me busy here, mate. And, and I'm just <laughs> all I'm thinking is I've got a new set of armor to go and hunt for. So, you know. Yeah, we need to yeah, get moving. Yeah, you're behind, mate. mate. You're behind. You need to get moving. But we're digressing, mate. We're digressing. We are. We are. Um, Summer of Mara, by the way, is out on the 16th of June. We've already got the review going live on the website. As I say, the um, the visuals and that, and this, it looks good. But you'll have to read the review to find out a little bit more about this one next up we've got edna and harvey the breakout anniversary edition so this one's been remastered so you can flip between the old visuals and the new visuals this one's a bit of a cult classic bit of a sort of point and click adventure game that i know that you and i loved back in the day i mean i used to play a lot of Discworld. i know you played a lot of broken sword so this one has sort of caught your attention tell us why yeah, you're right. I love these types of games. There's a lot of them on the Switch. It's become a real home for them. But what I do like about this one is the fact that there's you know a pretty long adventure, 20 hours plus, which is longer than most. And it's got that great sense of humor, characters that get brought to life with a lot of dialogue. So I'm feeling pretty positive. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I, I'm always a little bit skeptical when point and click adventure games get ported to the Nintendo Switch, purely because the controls aren't always as good as they could be let's put it that way you know but this one apparently it's been overhauled to, to make the best of the nintendo switch's touch control so i'm actually looking forward to that the graphic the new graphics do look a lot nicer as well by the way so you know the, the, the original is um looking a little yeah. bit old the new look of paint does give it a different feel so we'll have to wait and see we do with so many games dropping on the switch every single week we've got another which is called across the grooves that one's 15 pound 99 uh 16.99 for our friends in the us drops on the 17th now i think the switch is a little bit of a home for our interactive models uh sorry our in interactive models james oh like the sound of yeah, that. you've just created a new genre and uh <laughs> you're gonna set people's minds racing as to what exactly the, it is you mean so uh this is out. why this is why we don't do sort of live chats buddy <laughs> because uh you know i always sort of make errors like that and uh, my mind sort of races off in a different direction so let's get it back on point this is an interactive novel on the nintendo switch and i know a lot of our audience you know have a love i mean it is a bit of a niche sort of um, audience but a lot of people on our discord love these visual novels but are they something that you enjoy depends you know i think they're a dime a dozen sometimes there are lots and lots of them i do like the watercolor sort of you know sketchy vibe um, to the looks here they're good to chill out to and it just depends how good the story is whether it grabs you in or not yeah i think these are for me they're always like a good book you know if if the story grabs you then they are quite entertaining but a lot of people i know out there on the other side of the coin that sort of think of these as games really do they they're, they're more like just books that you can sit down and chill yeah to. But I, i'm not the, against it depends i mean like burly men at sea you know i really like that game it, it does have you know quite a bit of game to it if you know what i mean but a gameplay uh, but that was yeah. a, a visual novel that i really enjoyed so yeah i'm, I'm open to them they're not my favourite genre, if I'm being truthfully honest, but a good one. Yeah, I'll sit down with it, chill out, have a cup of tea. Fair dues. All right, then moving on to Blood and Guts Bundle. Now, Blood and Guts Bundle is a little bit of a surprise to me, James. I'll, I'll tell you why. It's uh, our good friends, uh, Digerati, the publisher, and they've basically put three games in a bundle, and we know these three games sort of inside and out. We've covered them a lot on our channel, especially in your bargain series, which goes live, by the way, every sunday the reason i want to talk about it james is because it's 40 pounds 49 in the uk for slain slay away camp love that and game super blood hockey i also love that game to be fair it's, it's a really random bundle for a start by the way it's uh three games completely different it just seems like yeah. a, an odd mix there's a lot of blood in all three of them though <laughs> but that's the common link yeah <laughs> but that's a common link i suppose but um my slight issue with it is the price because yeah. i've seen slain for sort of five quid 
sometimes on the UK. Yeah, 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 Super yeah. blood hockey under sort of seven pounds at times. The only one that's sort of the more expensive game, Slay Away Camp, at usually twenty pounds. But even that's yeah, gone on sale. It's gone on sale so. a few times. I mean, it's a good game. It's enjoyable. It's you know, it's it's, it's good value at like. 10 15 pounds maybe right um yeah when yeah. you add it when you when you add it up it, it doesn't make sense yeah it doesn't quite make sense i think if the thing is if you add them up now it is more expensive than the bundle price um mm. because uh, slain's gone back up to 20 pounds to be fair right so if slain is 20 slay away camps 20 that's already 40 um not not including super blood hockey right so it's a, it's a good price if you look at it that way as i say though my problem is is that those three games go on sale quite a lot so i would say to our audience if they're listening to this wait for a sale on each individual game would be my my view yeah i mean look if the bundle goes on sale great happy days pick it up i agree mate All right james next up we have colt canyon this is a roguelike pixelated shooter now we've seen tons of these pixelated type games on the nintendo switch where do you sit do you look forward to them every time you see a new one or are you getting fed up of these roguelike roguelites whatever the hell they <laughs> call them these days mate um personally i don't mind them at all i'll i'll, I'll pay, play one after the other and, and not get bored but i know a lot of people are fed up of pixel art all the time and these type of games where do you sit on that I'm a fan. I think it, there's a lot of them and some of the lower quality ones are just going to end up getting forgotten real quick. But, you know, there's been some brilliant games out come out of this and I think, you know, it's a style that works for indie studios. Simple as that. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it, it's exactly that. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, this one, you're, you're, you're saving a brother from Ruthless Bandits. We've got two brothers that were saving this uh this week on this <laughs> you wait for buses and then two come at once um there's local co-op boss fights it looks rather cool but as i say so many games dropping this week uh, you know is it just going to get missed out could do i mean there's local co-op like you say boss fights that look pretty cool it's got that western vibe to it it could it could go missing it just depends how good the controls are in this type of game Fair enough. Let's move on then to Railway Empire, the Nintendo Switch edition. This one's dropping. It's around £35.99 here in the UK. 40 bucks for our friends in the US. Um, hope you guys are all doing well, by the way. Now, this is set in the 1830s where building railway tracks is what it's all about. This is when the industry was booming over there and you had to build the most powerful railway empire so that's what they're going for sort of that, that type of simulation type game you love this type of stuff um so what do you think you know what this was actually supposed to come out a little while ago and i was really looking forward to it and i was disappointed when it got delayed i know that this is the uh version that covers america but it also includes i think it's mexico and then the andes so there's a couple yeah, of expansions three expansions yeah three expansions that come on this one Yep. yeah yeah there's lots of trains here there's i think there's 40 or so to collect uh, you've got to maintain buildings build factories it's got everything that you want in it it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea but um if you're a fan if you like trains if you like sims it's probably gonna sit with you and sink hundreds of hours and actually it's the perfect game to play on a train on the move yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, had to, you had to put that one in, didn't you? Mate? All right. <laughs> All right. Next one that I'm looking forward to, mate. Super Soccer Blast. Americans out there, don't kill me, but it is football. It shouldn't be soccer. That's that's just the way it is. <laughs> is that a bit too hardcore? It's harsh. It? Am I going to offend some of my American I friends? I don't think so. I don't think okay. so. Think Fair enough. Right. All right. This one's out on the 19th of June. Um, it's cheap seven pounds 19 or eight dollars eight euros for our friends in the us and europe now instantly when i looked at this i went back to my amiga 500 days and thought of kickoff and sensible soccer what about Classics, you, you yeah well, i love, love sensible soccer that's one of my favorites oh absolutely mate i couldn't, couldn't agree with you more i absolutely love those games if it can get a little bit of flavor of the gameplay from those games Look, I'm going to buy it anyway. For that price, it's worth a punt. Well, at the moment, I'm missing football. We're getting it back next week, next weekend. So, yeah, uh, you know, hopefully. Yeah. This hopefully. Co co coincide with that, you know. Liverpool going to win the league, of course. Let's hope so. Yeah, it's, it's not, not long left. So, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, buddy. So last two trailers in here uh, that I need to talk about is the Namco Museum Archives. Now, Namco Museum Archives Volume 1, which is 20 bucks, and Namco Museum uh, Archives uh, Volume 2. Now, let me just run down with you a few of these games and see if you remember them from long, long time ago, right? So Volume 1 is going to include 11 titles in total, 10 classic Namco titles, right? Which were never localized and released in the West. So a newly created 8-bit demastered version of Pac-Man Championship Edition. So is it worth buying just for that? And bear with me, James. It's also going to include Zevius, Mappy, Dig Dug, the Tower of Druaga, Sky Kid, Dragon Buster. Sky Kid's decent. Uh, sorry, bumping bump it, bump, bump it in there, but that was that was a great game. Uh, Dragon Spirit, the New Legend, Splatterhouse, Wanpaku Graffiti, and of course Pac-Man Championship Edition. So for me, if I'm buying this classic sort of um, game compilation this for a couple of games in there i think you'll probably be able to tell the ones and then we've got namco volume 2 which is another 20 bucks i mean look i know that we all love the old school games but we've seen quite a few of these collections before the 11 titles in volume 2 include galaga battle city pack land dig dug 2 super Zevious, mappy land legacy of the wizard rolling thunder dragon Dragons, I can't say my words. Dragon Buster 2, uh, Mendel Palace, and Gal Plus. I mean, Gallic is great. Rolling Thunder is great. I mean, these are all games. So, I mean, you're, you're essentially, you're just paying for emulation, right? Um, yeah, exactly. How much did you yeah. say they were each? 20 bucks each. 20 bucks for each uh, volume. Uh, mm. They include 11 titles on each one so you, if you bought both for 40 bucks you'd be getting 22 titles i've got to admit there's a lot of collections out there it's not the one that gets me the most excited uh but yeah a couple of them pretty cool i don't think i'll be rushing out to get them if i'm brutally honest that brings to conclusion our list of upcoming games on the Nintendo Switch this week. It's not all of them. There are some other games that are coming out, but we don't have time to fit them all in. Otherwise, the video would go on forever. Um, James, do you want to sort of bring a conclusion to this week's games? Or what do you think? Is it a, you know, a lot of sort of rubbish on there or are there some gems in the rough? There's a couple of standout games. I'm looking to forward to getting my hands on uh, Super Soccer Blast, uh, Burnout Paradise, and of course Ruiner. So I've uh, got my eye on those ones. Let's see how it pans out. Yeah, I think they're the three that well, I'm looking forward to as well. In terms of reviews, uh, Burnout Paradise, we'll be trying to get our hands on that copy. Ruiner, uh, we will definitely have a review of the Coma 2 and Summer in Mara will go up on our website and we'll do our best to cover anything else on there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time today. It's been a different video. Please do let us know if you like this type of video better to how we usually do it. And if that's the case, then we'll try and make more time for these types of videos. Let us know in the comment section down below. I'm gonna put some videos up for you now so you can check out some of our other lists. Take care, everyone. James, if you'd like to say goodbye. And, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks, everyone. Cheers for hanging out with us. Juan, let's go hunt some monsters, baby. Yeah, see you later, guys. Take care, and we'll see you on the next one.